Life-proof technology. Paint that repairs itself. Displays that can't shatter. Tablets that you can use as trampolines without breaking. It sounds futuristic, and some of that is still a ways off, but reality is fast catching up to those sci-fi notions, and LG is at the head of the mobile front of the self-healing revolution with its new G-Flex smartphone that can repair itself. At least, that's the claim. But can this curvy phablet really make the everyday signs of wear and tear just vanish all on its own? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our initial durability report on the LG G Flex. We'd like to mention up front that this G Flex review unit comes to us from Negri Electronics. If you want one of the world's only curved smartphones, do what we did. Head over to negrielectronics.com and pick one up for yourself. The G Flex's resilient reputation is made up of two parts. And the first is its ability to self-repair scratches made on the glossy back cover within minutes. We'll have more information on just how that coating works in our full review coming soon. Make sure to follow us at all the usual online public houses so you don't miss it when it lands. We've been using the G Flex for seven days, and already the backplate exhibits some fine hairline scratches. Nothing you'd be able to see unless you were looking for it, but that doesn't actually comfort us too much. Because you'd think that a phone build as self-healing would have no trouble sealing up tiny scratches like these. But they've been here for a few days, and they don't look like they're going anywhere anytime soon. Still, we wanted to test fresh damage, so we loaded up an array of objects the typical person might carry in a pocket. From car keys, to coin change, to earphones, to breath mints. We threw in a USB drive, and a hairpin, and even a cigarette lighter for you smokers out there. We tossed all that into a pocket, followed by the G-Flex, back first, of course, and took a walk around town. On our constitutional, we tried to maximize the phone's contact with the sharp objects. We switched pockets periodically to capture motion at different points on the body, and we changed up our gait from time to time. We went up the stairs and down the stairs. A lot. We even did a couple sprints down the sidewalk in the manner of a harried commuter trying to catch a bus. And then, just for good measure, we dumped everything into a zippered pocket and gave it a good shake-up. Because, apparently, we're sadists. What we found in terms of damage wasn't actually much, at first. The diagonal pattern under the phone's glossy coating does a good job at covering up minor scratches until you really pour some light on it. We took the unit outside briefly to get a good look at the corner scratches, then brought it into a 75-degree Fahrenheit room to allow it to heal. When we returned the phone to the testing table, the sun had moved, but the scratches had not. It could be that the phone just needs more time, but given our experience with the hairline mark from earlier, we're doubtful these scratches will ever heal. Still, those marks were pretty minor, so we put the device in a few more harrowing, but common, situations for a smartphone. We put it down on a sugar-covered countertop at our local coffee shop, accidentally grinding a few granules to dust on the phone as we brushed it away. We carelessly tossed it into a car a few times, subjecting it to the rough and dirty fabric of the footwell mat. And yes, we did that thing all drivers have done to their phones at least once, the dreaded forgot-it-was-in-my-lap maneuver. That really hurt. After all that, another sunlight pass shows us a much more significant damage pattern. Now, no one should reasonably expect some of these deeper gouges to come out. Despite all the Terminator jokes, the G-Flex is not a T-1000, and LG even says so in its own promo video. But we did hope some of the finer scratches might vanish, as they did within minutes in LG's bronze brush test. Yet, even after another half hour in the warm air, our test unit was still pretty well scored. We really wanted to see a scratch heal itself, though. So, sticking with an item we might reasonably find in a pocket, we took a common American penny, 1973 if you're wondering, and rubbed a clean spot on the Flex's back for a few seconds at light to medium pressure, giving us a nice and visible but still fairly shallow damage pattern. We also rubbed the same penny slightly harder in an adjacent zone so we could compare the effects of different depths. Then we photographed the flex every five minutes to see what happened. 
Now, even after 40 minutes sitting in prime self-healing temperature, the scratches didn't really go anywhere, even after we tried rubbing them with a sleeve to try to get them to fade. But when we sat down to edit this video about an hour and a half later, we found that the scratches had, in fact, faded to a dramatic extent. We're not sure if we have a rise in the room's temperature or just the passage of time to thank, but the G-Flex is indeed capable of self-repairing minor shallow scratches. Unfortunately though, as you can see from the rest of the device, it's not likely to cover up the dings and scrapes that most of us encounter when carrying a naked smartphone. The other big part of this phone's durability push is the flexibility that gives the device its name. It conforms nicely to the posterior when placed in a back pocket, and so you can sit on it without too much fear of trouble outside the occasional butt dial. More importantly, the flex is resistant to bending the other way. Because heaven knows, we all sit where we shouldn't sometimes, and that means sometimes we sit on our phones. Now, we didn't like doing this, but we did it anyway, for science. As you can see, the flex is aptly named. Even after multiple sittings by a pretty bulky dude on unyielding wood on a cold winter day, the phone has no trouble taking the stress in stride. It flexes under weight and springs right back once that weight is removed. No part of the device shows any ill effects, aside from some expected scratches on the front panel. And two small deformations on the display, which are only visible when the screen is off. We're not sure if these came from something within the phone, or instead were a result of some nails on the porch. We'll ask LG about it when we get a chance. So where does this leave us? Well, in terms of the scratch test, we certainly weren't as lucky as LG was in its own promo video. That's because we didn't test the device in lab conditions with a bronze brush. But then again, most consumers won't be doing that either. While it is really impressive to watch a certain type of scratch disappear before your eyes, we were able to come up with many types of scratches, not all of them deep, that don't respond as well to LG's magic paint job. On the flip side, though, the phone had no trouble standing up to the bends. For a curved smartphone to take the full weight of an average human male and then spring right back to shape with no cracks or creaks is, to say the least, very impressive and very reassuring. So while the G Flex is probably just as prone as most smartphones to scratches and surface damage, the flexibility of its durable, curved design still puts it a step ahead of the competition for all you folks out there who don't necessarily look before you sit. Don't forget, folks, we have a full review of the LG G Flex coming up very shortly. And if you want one of your very own, visit our friends at Negri Electronics, negrielectronics.com. But before you go anywhere, please toss us a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you have some feedback of your own, some follow-up questions. We'll try and get to them if we can. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon.